and to do hybridization, uh, basically, what I essentially do in my head is I count the groups. One, two, three, oops, and four on the given carbon. It can be other uh, not one of the atoms as well. So it's sp, sp2, sp3 for the four groups. So you go, uh, let's do this one. What do you think it is? Well, how do sp2 because there's three groups, double bond and two single bonds. This one. Not sp2. SP3, because there's four groups, there's a hydrogen not drawn in. So it's an invisible hydrogen. Remember, every carbon has four <coughs> bonds. You only see one, two, three bonds here. So there's a hydrogen that we don't draw in to make the fourth bond. So it's SP3. That one's SP3. This one. SP2, because there's a hydrogen not drawn in. There's a double bond, a single bond, and another single bond. So everything around the ring Everything around the arene. SP2. SP2, yeah. Uh, oh, I did all the carbons. Oh, how about this one? SP3. SP3. Yeah, because there's four or three hydrogens not drawn in. Every carbon has four bonds. So that top one would be SP3. So you just have to count the number of groups around it. Essentially, if it's single bonds, it's got to be SP3. If there is one double bond, like this, then it has to be sp2, or like these. If there's a triple bond, it has to be sp. That's kind of what it comes down to. So, you can either do this in your head, or you can say, is there a, any double or triple bonds? No, it's sp3. If there is a double bond, sp2. If there's one double bond, sp2. Two double, one triple bond, sp. Yeah? Um, I thought the H can't hybridize with the P or the make up. The H itself doesn't hybridize. That's correct. So you still count. So that H's are S orbitals. Right. They're unhybridized S orbitals. Correct. But then for that one, the one right, this one, the one right below it. So okay. then that's a SP. But because the H moves it to the P. Or? Uh, that's this is a SP three. Right. Uh, the H is not hybridizing. The hybridization occurs within the carbon atom itself. So the carbon atom is 2s2, 2p2. So it's the s's from the carbon that mix with the p's from the carbon. Oh, okay. So that's where the hybridization occurs. Even there's h's on it, they're not hybridizing. So this carbon is hybridizing all by itself. It's not taking orbitals from this here. It's bonding with orbitals from the oxygen, but not hybridizing with orbitals from the oxygen or anything around it. Yeah, I mean, this too. Uh, anybody else on this one? Okay, let me do these two guys first. Is there also SP2? The, or not the ring? Uh, the to the All these are SP2. This one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, double bond, single bond, single bond. Three groups. So there's no hydrogen here, because that would break the four bond rule of carbon. One, two, three, four. Yeah? Uh, can you go over quickly like, what the meaning of hydrogen? Hybridization uh, means that, oh, okay, outside of hybridization, we've got for carbon, say, S and P orbitals. The P orbitals, there's three of them, they're all orthogonal to each other in orientation. So they follow the X, the Y, the Z axis. From that, you predict, oh, 90 degree bond angles, because P orbitals are at 90 degrees. However, that's not what we would find for carbon. We find 180. We find uh, 120 and we find 109.5. How to explain that? How we explain that is we come up with this idea called hybridization, which says S's and P's mix. And if you actually mathematically do that, you'll get those angles of 180, you'll get 120 and 109.5. So the math actually works to match what we find experimentally. So that's what we're guessing is happening. The S's and the P orbitals are mixing together just like your Prius mixes its combustion engine with the batteries. So 
with the voltage coming from the batteries. And so it makes a new car that's a mixture of the two. So this is a new kind of bond, really orbital, that is a mixture of two different, two of its original orbitals. Uh, so that's hybridization. And that explains the kind of angles, the bond angles we get. Are the electrons from the different orbitals like pushing into each other to like make different angles or like the uh, it really comes from the orbitals, uh, but the electrons will sit in those orbitals. So let's say you mix an S and a P <coughs> like this, what you'll get is a big fat lobe on the top and a tiny one on the bottom. And so this will make a new orbital, S and P hybridized, and your electron will be sitting somewhere in one of those lobes. Uh, and then when it comes up to bond, that electron will meet with another electron from another orbital to make your actual bond. Uh, so if we really think of the mathematics of the orbital itself. Mathematically, you add the two functions here, you get this kind of function. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sp3, the bond angle is 109.5. Correct. But if we have like a cycle of it would be like a 90 degree angle. So which angle would you choose to say it is? The 109.5 is the ideal bond angle. For a cyclobutane, or cyclobutane, uh, it looks like this. So it does look like 90 degrees, but what happens whenever you get rings, there's bond strain, because it would rather be 109.5. So it buckles, kind of folds on itself to, I, I can't really draw it, you can look in the book to see it nicely, but it bends over to give a new bond angle that's a little more favorable. So the actual bond angle is not 109.5 but the ideal bond angle is. Should we? So you don't need to know the actual bond angles though, because for every molecule it will be different. For example, water is sp3 hybridized, but doesn't have a 109.5 degree bond angle. It's more like 105. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are specific to every single atom and, or every single molecule, you can't memorize all of those. And we don't need to know how to draw it like that. Kind you of. don't need to know how to draw it like this. When you get to OCHEM, you do. Okay. Not for this one, but there's some other ones that are more interesting. Okay. So yes, you'll have to eventually be able to draw stuff that's way harder than this to draw. Okay.